Uh, hello, I'm uh, Joachim de Zutter. I'm a cybersecurity researcher, and today I want to introduce you to the Capture the Flag contest uh, called Flareon. And I will quickly take you through the 12 challenges that I almost completed entirely. Um, so these uh, challenges, you had to solve them basically in uh, six weeks. Uh, the current uh, contest is over, but all challenges and all solutions are available online. So you might want to try that out. Um, the first and the second challenge, they were basically testing if you can use a decompiler, like a Java decompiler or a .NET decompiler. These are pretty easy. Um, the third one was about whether you can extract some data out of the resource section of a portable executable. So that's also rather trivial. Um, the fourth reverse engineering challenge was uh, installing a DLL which uh, hooks the functionality of the browser so that if the Flareon uh, site would be uh, contacted, there would be some code injection, some JavaScript code injection going on. And so if you could uh, reverse engineer how the JavaScript code worked, you could solve this challenge as well. The fifth challenge was about WebAssembly. Uh, Chrome DevTools was very useful for uh, single stepping through this uh, code. Um, I think Firefox cannot do this. It's very useful to use Chrome DevTools because it uh, could put breakpoints and stuff like that. The sixth challenge was very interesting because it was a 64-bit Linux CLF file and it was asking for 666 keys which were about 60 characters each and they were being checked with seven different validation functions so uh, you had to be able, as a reverse engineer, you had to be able to figure out that it was doing a CRC32 checksum, modified base 64 with a changed uh, lookup table. So, ARC4, uh, Reverse Cypher 4, it was doing, it was also doing uh, some Fibonacci computations. So, uh, because they uh, asked for, this ELF asked for 666 keys, you had to automate it somehow, so you could use, for example, a GDB script, or either Python, or something like that. Uh, the seventh challenge was difficult because it was using Heaven's Gate to execute 64-bit code from within a 32-bit executable. This is rather tricky because uh, most Windows debuggers, they cannot handle this situation. When you have a debugger that can only handle 32-bit processes, it cannot uh, go into the 64-bit code. The eighth challenge was about uh, was using a vector, the exception handler, to uh, decrypt Visual Basic script code at runtime. So every byte of the Visual Basic script code would be um, decrypted, and then that vectored exception handler would actually re encrypt it after use. So every instruction that was executed would first, uh, first uh, the code would be decrypted, and then it would be uh, encrypted again. The ninth challenge was uh, was uh, with the first flo first uh, sectors of a floppy disk. You could basically run this in QMU, and you could could attach an IDOT debugger to it. The trick here was to figure out that it was using interrupt 1A to get the date of today in binary coded format, and it was then using that to uh, decrypt a hidden message, it was, it was a partial key. It also asked for a password from the user. The 10 challenge was very interesting because it was using a 64-bit Windows kernel driver which was then launching a software hypervisor. This is quite tricky to debug. Um, basically, I did this with QMU, which I was running inside a 64-bit Linux and I was using the KVM kernel module with nested VMX enabled to be able to single step through the hypervisor code. The 11 challenge, for this challenge we were given a packet capture and an executable and uh, basically this executable was doing DNS tunneling. Um, it was then using some decoding, some modified ARC4 so you had to reverse all this stuff and then you had to figure out that it was also using AES encryption for the command and control communication and lateral movement and also for decrypting a zip file. 
And then the last one, which one I, uh, this one I couldn't solve, it was using one instruction set emulator inside another one instruction set emulator inside the 16-bit uh, uh, interrupt handler. So that's my talk. Thank you.